Sounds will now be recorded. 9.03. Uh, if you want to take roll, Marty. Uh, Camilla? I'm here. Tom, Chris? Here. Amanda Luttrell? Here. Scott Zeches? Cy Michaels? Here. Okay, um, first, uh, first agenda item would be uh, petitions or communications, oral or written, if uh, anybody has anything uh, on that. I'd like to introduce Rob Quinn, and you can see Rob there. Rob is with Spectrum Marketing, but Rob has been uh, working uh, closely with the RPM group on the Bicycling Vision Project. Um, he's also been um, involved in the community in a number of ways in the last year or so. Um, he's, a, he's a cyclist himself. He's been involved in Ride the Rockies um, that was here in Trinidad years ago and that's actually what, as he was just saying, what um, prompted him to move to Colorado. Um, so um, Rob has a lot of um, a vast knowledge about the cycling world and since Trinidad seems to be uh, moving in that direction in a lot of different areas, um, Rob wanted to talk to us about what he could help Trinidad and the Tourism Board do as far as marketing their new outdoor recreation. So uh, Rob, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Um, I just want to remind you that um, we want to keep it brief because you do have um, your PowerPoint to do as well. Very good, Marty. Thank you. Yes, bre brevity is a virtue. But thanks for reminding me. We media people like to talk. Um, yeah, I've, I've, hi guys. Um, I've had a, a huge interest in Trinidad for a while. Um, I've been in uh, Denver now for over 25 years as a media executive. And two years ago, either uh, they retired me or I retired myself. I'm not quite sure, but I had a heck of a run as a general manager um, at a couple of uh, radio and television stations, which in Denver is a long run. And I uh, started working at my own ad agency uh, two years ago called Spectrum Marketing, which I created about a decade ago just because of my involvement in cycling and skiing. But um, I needed to uh, make it more real as I had retired from becoming a general manager. My last uh, assignment actually was in Colorado Springs running the Cumulus Cluster down there and commuting down from Denver. Um, I've been in the same house in Jefferson County for 25 years. And I have a couple of passions. One is marketing and the other is mountain biking. And I'm able to in, 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 in integrate the two uh, whenever possible. And uh, it's great and it works well. And I bring a lot of professional expertise on the media side from my experience, which I'll go over briefly. And then a lot of hands-on current um, involvement in the cycling community in a number of layers. So Marty, you have a PowerPoint. Um, do you wanna bring that up and I can zip through it? Absolutely. So let me figure out how to do this real quick. I'm new at this, so let's see what I get. Um, you know, as she does this, uh, here we go. Great. Um, I know you guys are cognizant of what a wonderful opportunity you're going to have with the development of the open space and really how everybody, uh, that looks great, Marty. Um, you make it a little bigger, but that's we, we can see that really well. Thank you. Um, and um, there's a lot of anticipation for what you guys um, are going to be able to bring to the table recreationally. And we mountain bikers um, bring our money and bring our families and, um, you know, spread the word uh, in a rather viral, quick way. So the, the effort, you're on the radar with everybody already. Uh, and now, you know, you just got to finish it off and invite them and, of course, have a world-class facility. Uh, next uh, slide, Marty. So I'm still an active racer. Um, this was from last year, uh, the South Boundary Big Ride, which went from um, Angel Fire to Taos. And it's promoted by a company called Zia Rides, and they're kind of the big promoter in your area. They promote New Mexico and in Southern Colorado. Um, I'm uh, good friends and associates with the owner and promoter, uh, Seth, and um, there is an interest of them promoting an event in your area once you guys get up and running. 
these folks are kind of the logical folks logistically because they uh, are already active in both of the big markets that you're sandwiched between in Colorado and um, Trinidad. And, so, and uh, my point being is uh, I'm actively engaged in the sport still. Uh, I just turned 60 and I'm mad there's no races this year because finally I was going to kind of outlast everybody and maybe get some good results. But I train and I'm hyper involved in everything that is mountain biking in Colorado from uh, an administrative fundraising um, consultant. And then ultimately I do a lot of races. Uh, next slide. I guess some folks talk the talk. I'm able to actually talk the talk and, and walk the walk. Um, this, I'm quite proud of this. I promoted the first mountain bike race in Mexico with a partner who was with the Baja Department of Tourism um, when I was a media executive in San Diego. So this was a Montaña Grande. Uh, that kind of dates back to my roots as a promoter. Uh, next slide, if you would, Marty. Oh, I always skipped one. There you go. And that's an actual shot of one of the starts. That's me with a back to you and my partner in the, with a motocross. But I guess to represent that I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, I hope in my tombstone they do say he promoted the first mountain bike race in Mexico because I think that would sound kind of cool. <laughs> uh, next slide. So when I moved to Colorado, I remained active. And then my daughter became involved in NICA, the high school cycling league. And then I coached for seven years at the Evergreen uh, team. And really, we had a lot of success. I have been with the league since its formation. And then after seven years, and my daughter had graduated and moved on to Fort Lewis to race there, um, I stepped down. But I guess my point being is the high school league and uh, NICA, the National Intercollegiate Cycling Association, have become a, a real tour de force in Colorado. Um, there's over 2,000 high school races. They bring their parents and their siblings, and they're quite an economic engine. Just this morning, I was talking with Kate Rao, the president and CEO. I have a, a, probably a weekly conversation with her, and I have brought those races to Snowmass as an agent for them. Um, and uh, she's quite excited about being able to potentially have a venue in the southern corner of the state and uh, make it a uh, nice availability for those teams. So um, that's um, kind of something I bring to the table and I'm quite passionate about. Uh, next slide. I am currently, and I got a call at 1030 actually with Dave Hagan, the coach and CEO of Fort Lewis. I'm currently consulting a 24 time national champion Fort Lewis College. That's a picture of my daughter when she raced for them. She graduated and working now for a software company. That's a picture of the team. They're 24 time national champions. They're like the, I, I, I gotta be careful when I say this, the Dallas Cowboys of uh, college cycling just because they're you know got such an image and a persona um they would be very interested in hosting a race in your area as well um the current race they host is in snowmass if you can believe that hey perfect timing and uh your area is of interest to them i have a conference call with dave hagan at 10 30. um i have been involved with a snow snowmass mountain bike effort for the last uh really almost decade we started out by uh, building and promoting a, a, a loop called the Snowmass Loop. And then I promoted and helped um, establish this uh, with the Snowmass Loop uh, Mountain Bike Fondo, um, a great promotional op cross promotional opportunity in the area, as you can see from that state scrim. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Well, bottom line is our hard work has resulted in an IMBA, and that's the International Mountain Biking Association Gold Level Ride Center. And that means, you know, it's like a three-star Michelin rating. It means everything from hotels to infrastructure to trails to friendly environment to brew pubs to coffee. This is a great place to vacation and destination in yourself. Um, once you get that level, things really start popping. Um, I could give you somebody's name at Snowmass who would tell you that I'm an active partner with them. I um, am involved in what they do, and this was a really big thing. I do believe that Trinidad um, can uh, aspire and gain that status. Uh, next, day, next slide, please. So um, even though I've been a media executive, I produce my own content and um, we've gotten some awards, and I'm actually a film major and a, a media major from college. I uh, just ended up being a radio executive um, for the last 30 years. 
But um, with that said, uh, here's an example of our work. I know you guys already have great work in the can. Um, I work with the best indies in Denver, and I have them work for me cheap when they don't have high paying gigs. I know all these guys, I know their schedules. So um, I get the best folks at the lowest rate, and they're all outdoorsmen, um, and they love shooting stuff outside of Denver. Um, and my production capabilities are really good. Marty, are you able to click that uh, TV commercial on the next slide? And just give you a give you guys a little example of the kind of work we do. Yeah, then there's a play hit you can hit as well. Perfect. Uh, that arrow to the left should do it. seeing is mountain biking has really gone mainstream people that saw that ad not everybody's a mountain biker but they certainly like and appreciate and associate with that image uh high quality production done with really uh high depth high ditch equipment that most uh smaller uh municipalities and operators can't quite frankly afford because they don't get enough work so that's the reason everything looks a little sharper pops a little better and uh, you know even the voiceover talent um, is a little special so I've managed to incorporate mountain biking and action sports into my client marketing plan and quite frankly it's hit the nail on the head and it's worked really well so that's an example of the quality uh, production we do but you guys have a lot of nice stuff in the can already that could be repurposed and re-edited so um, I've, I've seen your library and your work is really nice with ever doing that uh, next one Marty Great. Um, about a year ago, and this is funny, I read a biography about Benjamin Franklin, and he created a, a journalistic uh, a legacy for himself, and it furthered his business and political aspirations. So I took a, a, a page from his book, and I've always been a pretty good writer, and because of, you know, it being a executive or a, the head you always i was finding myself doing a lot of writing a lot of commercial writing a lot of corporate correspondence and i always try to keep it funny so i approached 303 endurance which is the biggest website um the go-to information source of all and from of all endurance athletes in the uh front range and for that matter the three-state area and i said hey i've got a great angle on things i incorporate mountain biking and life and what's topical and i don't take things too seriously and would you be interested and lo and behold uh, they took a chance and this is now the most read entity in 303 endurance some reads i get over 200,000 reads which just blows me away because i still kind of have a terrestrial i still get the newspaper so i just can't believe how viral uh, these internet articles are but long story short um, I can tell you that my article has become somewhat of a mainstay in the mountain biking community and it gets read and I have a nice long deal now with 303 cycling and it works out great for my business interests so um, I have a nice voice and a nice mouthpiece um, that has a lot of reach uh, next article please case in point uh, I came down for your ceremony and did an article about uh, your potential and what's happening and if you're going to be the next Moab or Fruta, that got 180,000 reads. Um, you know, you guys might be able to quantify what your reach has been so far um, in your efforts. That's a lot of traction with the right people. I bring that to the table. I have carte blanche on my editorial. Uh, next picture. Here's my resume. Um, it, it's interesting, it's 40 years of work, but um, it's high level uh, positions, um, all with references and just a nice ascension. And then for the last couple of years, it's 100% my agency, Spectrum Marketing. Um, anybody I've ever worked for, I'm happy to give you their name and number, and uh, I, hopefully they'll say nice things. Uh, but that's my professional resume. Um, here's what I hope to accomplish if we're to work together. Um, I buy a lot of media in Albuquerque, Phoenix, Texas, and Denver from my biggest client, Dr. Joseph Ramos, the doctor lawyer. Yeah, our arch enemy is uh, Mr. Sawaya, by the way, from Trinidad, uh, who's a great competitor. Um, with that said, um, your footprint and how much you buy and how active you are really dictates your rates. 
what you see uh, is like an airline line of seats. One person pays 500 for a seat, one pay, person pays 2,000, one person pays 200. The other person's going on the airline flight for free. That's exactly how a spot break is in television. I buy a lot of media. I'm engaged every day. I get the best deals. I get the most editorial access. And, um, you know, I'm up to my neck in, these, in, the, in this business day in and day out. Um, secondly, I can provide great production at a very, very low, low cost. Um, uh, you can go to the next, uh, uh, the first day, if you would, Marty, you, you skipped. At a very low cost. Um, act, next, I can act as a region, um, providing an assistance, staging, uh, cycling, and entertainment events. Um, in the last couple of years, I brought Nika High School, I brought Ride the Rockies, and Colorado Classic. The Snowmass, um, I place events um, at municipalities and act as a middleman. Um, you saw the gold level sponsorship that Snowmass uh, achieved. That should be a target for Trinidad. Um, I am able, if I engage with you guys, to attend mountain biking and tourism relating meetings in Trinidad's behalf. A lot of these meetings are in Boulder. Um, I live a half hour away. If we were to do some business, I could represent you instead of having somebody drive all the way from Trinidad. It's important to attend these meetings if you do want to get gold level status. Next page. I'm almost done, guys. Been very patient. Thank you. Um, next page, Marty. Thank you. Um, leverage um, the media weight that we have. Use my platform at 303 Endurance to promote and inform uh, the folks about what you're doing. And so far, the first article was very successful. Um, use my network to cross promote in their existing events. Case in point, Scott Bicycles, each year they do a large dealer gathering um, to test their product. Why not do it in Trinidad instead of Sedona? Once we're up and running, I can plant that seed and say, hey, I got a new interesting venue for you to bring 200 dealers for a week. Sedona's great, Trinidad's new and exciting and better. You know, your people will like this. Um, I can kind of be your person in the industry. Um, I bring 40 years of mountain biking tradition and experience. Again, a lot of folks talk the talk. I walk the walk. I'm somewhat of an anomaly because I'm a marketing expert and in a big market with big experience, but my real passion is mountain biking. And I've learned to combine the two and really created a decent little business for me. Although the uh, personal, personal injury attorney does pay the bills. Um, I'm active footprint in Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, and Arizona media markets. So I get the best rates. I'm engaged with these folks constantly. Great references from all employers. And the Snowmass success story is probably my most poignant. I mean, I did this for these guys. They got to the Super Bowl and they're happy to give me a very good reference. Um, my work for them isn't that substantial because they have a full-time staff and a, a very large, large budget, which I've learned to work with as well. Um, and, you know, they just can't give me enough work. So we do what we can, but I would love to uh, take my uh, assets and guns and train it on Trinidad. Um, last uh, uh, slide, if you guys have anything you could um, want to ask me. I know I've taken a lot of your time already, uh, but I did have a lot of content to give to you. Um, I think you have a passionate opportunity. I think with a savvy and professional media execution, you guys can get there really quick. Um, I understand the dependency on the marijuana industry and how the world's gonna change next year when uh, New Mexico goes legal and that tax base is gonna be eroded. I've seen the success of Fruita, I've seen the success in Eagle, I've now seen the success in Snowmass. Once this, hopefully, uh, this uh, health situation um, runs through us, you guys are really going to be in the catbird seat. There are thousands of mountain bikers and outdoor people anticipating the opening of this open space. I-70 has gotten pretty stale. 285 has gotten pretty stale. And um, this is an easy shot for most people. And I guarantee you, when you open the gates, when everybody's informed, you're really going to be surprised at the reaction. Yes, Did anybody have any? Go ahead. Does anybody have any questions? I do have a question, but I'll, I'll let uh, I'll, I'll let the panel uh, go first. Go, go ahead, Sam. Um, no, I thought it was a really yeah, a, a thorough. I thought it was a thorough report on the different ways that. Uh, could break up our bicycle tourism and different ideas. I really liked it. I guess I wondered on the one-to-one -one interviews why the mayor or city council or no one directly from the city was interviewed for that. But the report itself is really great, Rob. I just kind of wondered on that one-on-one -on -one why uh, 
it wasn't the city council or mayor or Main Street or tourism or anybody involved in that. I mean, I did go to the meetings that we had, but just the one-on-one -on -one interviews seemed like you interviewed a few local people, and I did, you know, I know you're trying to teach us, and the report was really great. I just wondered if there was a thought process. Yeah, no, we, we could definitely. Let me, let me stick my neck in here a little bit. So Rob Quinn is with Spectrum Marketing. You you think you're talking to Cy, especially uh, another Rob with RPM. So RPM okay, and the RPM Marketing report. are two different entities, and we'll have a report. Um, the one that you received last night that I asked you to review is actually from RPM, and that's a different Rob. Oh, and okay. he's the one that oh, did okay. the one-on-one -on -one interviews. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm sorry, Rob. I thought you were the other Rob that I got. Ah, uh, no problem. Yeah, you, we have confusing the two Robs. Yeah. Yeah, but um, um, yeah, your report was really great. Thanks. You bet, guys. Uh, Can I let you have any questions? Go ahead. Go ahead, Rob. No, I do not. Uh, not at this time. Thank you. It was a great presentation. Thank you. I love the potential about what's going to happen, guys. Um, I, I'd really love to be involved, and there's a lot of pieces that we can interconnect here. Um, you know, I notice we haven't even talked about fees. M my situation is, um, I've you know worked hard all my life. Whatever, I, I end up being a very reasonable contractor because I have a small infrastructure. It's just me, and uh, you know, my family members handle my technical and my billing uh, issues, and I just kind of make hay while the sun shines. So um, what's kind of neat is uh, as others come and ask for absorbent amounts to for the clients, um, usually my requests are so humble and I bring so much to the table, I'm considered a heck of a deal. Uh, this just makes me happy. You know, that's hey, why. Tom, this is, this is Phil. Uh, I'd like to go ahead, Mr. Quinn. Mr. Quinn. Mr. Quinn. Go right ahead. Um, my question is, is with uh, your vast knowledge and experience, uh, I have been trying to promote what I call community readiness because as you could probably as you go around town our community to some extent is lacking in the readiness that uh, we would need for some of these events to occur so uh, I don't know if you could briefly just tell us what uh, our community would need to be able to engage with these people while they're here is this a one night usually event two day event uh, you know, what, what are the needs of these people? What are they looking for when they come into a community so that we could economically benefit from uh, these events, uh, our uh, downtown area, our, uh, our businesses? Well, great question, Mayor. Um, one thing is if you noticed, there's the International Mountain Biking Association and Roaring Fork Valley had created their own branch of that called the Roaring Fork International Mountain Biking Association and they're a localized hub. I do sense you've got a, 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 a small but passionate cycling infrastructure there that's only going to grow. And my suggestion that I would be happy to um, undertake this is I would try to create a branch um, that would be the Trinidad um, branch of IMBA and begin a um, organized uh, infrastructure of passionate volunteers and people with some vision and want to roll their sleeves up a little bit for the greater good. Um, I think what you're going to see is uh, the brew pops, um, the open air restaurants, the more contemporary, uh, you know, barbecue, fish, taco, you're going to see a variety of businesses attracted to your community. So I think what the expected experience is going to be is a, um, a very unique trail and outdoor situation that your development will afford itself for that pristine open space. Um, secondly, and definitely as importantly, is fair priced accommodations that aren't necessarily the fanciest but are um you know clean and reasonable and then um these folks will spend money uh, i think um there's a, a a few studies that show the average weekend of a cycling um enthusiast who brings his family they spend about a thousand dollars over the weekend and that's kind of the marker um so i think it's going to kind of take care of yourself as your services expand and um, a greater array of restaurants and um, other activities present themselves just through, you know, profit potential. 
um, you're going to see your municipality blossom. And I think these kind of accoutrements and services that I would hope to experience if I came to the weekend and brought my family, they're, they're going to kind of appear just through the invisible hand of economics. I would, though, try to assemble a grassroots group of the passionate enthusiasts to create uh, an IMBA branch um, and create a dialogue with that Boulder branch from the beginning and become uh, a, a favorite uh, disciple of them so they're quick to award that gold status. That gold status comes, they're flying in from New York in a hurry. That, that, that is uh, a boon to tourism to be incredible. Uh, one of the things, just for your for a little bit of information, like I said, I, I've been on the ground floor on, and I'm sure a lot of the um, hoopla, hoopla out there is about the Fisher's Peak project. And uh, I've been on the ground floor with that since the beginning. And just uh, for your information, uh, you know, we are currently doing the master plan. Uh, we're hoping to have, we were hoping to have an actual mall uh, opening this in June, but because of the COVID-19, that would not, that did not happen. Uh, it could possibly still happen really later this summer, uh, but we're hoping to have a little bit more opening, a greater opening, a larger opening uh, in 2021. So just so that you could have that in your, uh, you know, in your, your pocket to know that our particular, this particular project uh, is looking like. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, now, you know, what's interesting about snow mass, and they've got such an uh, advantageous situation in winter, um, you know, the, you know, no need to advertise for guests in the winter there in that lodging area and tourism tax is a pretty good number and it adds up and gives them a really nice war chest for the summer to recycle the, uh, visitors with events and things like that. So I think the challenge is kind of for you guys to get the ball rolling in the momentum rolling. I'm not sure if there's going to be a kickoff state grant to give you a little, um, little, little impetus, a little money to get the word out um, ahead of that. Then, in my opinion, the promotion money should be somewhat self-subsidizing because I would imagine that your tourism and your hotel rate and and, and occupancies are really going to. Um, rise dramatically so the tourism effort should be self-funding uh, but I'm just wondering if there could be any impetus to kind of push you over the little bit and you know and get it rolling so you hit the ground running uh, just a little, a little bit more of information uh, uh, I just saw the most recent magazine from the nature from the nature conservancy and I talked to well, he's one they're one of our partners this morning and uh, I asked him what the reach was for that magazine, and it's uh, across the country, some international, uh, but it was like one million uh, reaches that they've got on their uh, on their list that they send this magazine out to. Uh, we've I've also had an interview read here a while back with the American Legion, which is also national but also international. So there's a lot of uh, interest in what we're doing right now. Great. Great. Um, you know, it's interesting. I have a, a, quite a bit of interaction with the television stations in the front range, particularly the Denver ones, and they've been told to find as much good news as possible. Uh, you know, the research has shown everybody's just had it with all the bad news. Is there any stories or anything that can you know, make everybody feel good about Colorado? You know, let's please incorporate that into the, the daily dose of bad news. So um, an interesting thing is with the leverage and relationship I have on the marketing and sales side, my suggestions for editorial or stories um, normally go to the top of the stack pretty quickly, and they're usually pretty good ideas that are just because I understand their world. Um, the front range media is really interested in the Trinidad story, and it's a, it's a good story too. It's a positive story for the state. So you know when you guys are ready and you think your house is in order, um, you know I can actively solicit and pander my news contacts to be coming down and just do positive human interest stories about hey did you know you know there's going to be a whole new game in southern colorado or you know you had enough of the i-70 grind if i got some great news for you 2021 you're going to have the size you know the state of the side of the rhode island recreate in 
place that you know you might not have realized was going to be the next action sport hub. You can get that. You know, editorial is a hundred times better than paid ad. Um, but if you can interpret your ad in your editorial way, um, you can really, really make some move some mountains. And it's kind of I've, done, I've done about two or three interviews with some of the, you know the Colorado Sun, and there's two or a couple of them out of Denver in the past that I've done some interviews with. So they've been reaching out to us as well. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's an extremely positive story that everybody's really anxious to um, capitalize on and hear about. Thank you, Rob. Great. Thanks, everybody, for uh, uh, suffering through the long presentation. If I can be of service, please let me know. Thank, Thank, you. Well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Uh, the next item up for discussion is uh, the 2020 grant status. Uh, Marty, just one, uh, I got a, a message from uh, Scott and he didn't get uh, information to link in. Um, well, he, his email must not be working just on it. I'll communicate with him, but he got the same email that I sent to the rest of the board. It's it's actually, a, it's a group email and Scott is on that group email. So I'm not sure what, why he didn't get it. Okay, um, I just wanted to let you know. Okay, Did ask him to his, his spam yes. folder and see if it went into his spam folder. Uh, um, Tom, he, just, uh, he just sent me a text. Go ahead, Mayor. Right, I just wanted to have a couple other things I wanted to bring up. Uh, you know, I've had a couple of people, I had at the last meeting, I uh, inquired that uh, with our master plan, uh, maybe getting someone on, from your board on there, and I've got a couple of inquiries. I didn't know if there was any other interest besides the two that I have. Uh, you know, I have Scott and I also have Cy who's interested, and I'm about to choose from them at, 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 you know, very shortly. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, I got a report uh, yesterday from Wally, and of course Wally, I'm not sure if he's on. Uh, it was the uh, it was a 2020 uh, market analysis and opportunity assessment, and he gave me a copy, and I read through this yesterday. And uh, if you get a copy of that, there's some very important information in there that I think that your board uh, needs to uh, read uh, as far as a, an, oppor an opportunity assessment for the, you know what's going on in Trinidad and, and opportunities and things that we you guys maybe need to think about. So uh, you might ask Wally for a copy of that and if he is willing to give that to you. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. I'll do that. I'll go ahead and just forward a digital copy to all of you uh, on the email that uh, was an invite to this uh, meeting. Thank you, uh, Wally. Appreciate that. Wally, there was some pretty good information in there. Thank you. Uh, thank you for checking it out. I, I, yeah, I thought it was very informative as well. Yeah. Anything else, uh, Mayor? No, that was it. Okay. Uh, 2020 grant status, uh, Marty? Okay, so in one of the last meetings, uh, what was tabled and wanted you wanted to discuss further was the grant applications that uh, for those organizations who were going to move forward with their events for this, for this year and um, to make some decisions on whether or not you were going to move forward with those, we were just going to relook at them. Um, and there are uh, several that have informed me that they're going to move forward with their events. One of those is the Las Animas County Fair, and they were asking for $4,000. The A.R. Mitchell Museum was waiting for um, opening uh, permission to open, and she's got her show set and ready to roll. Um, and she was um, asking for $5,000. Uh, the Branson High Low Gravel Grinder is also moving forward, um, and she was asking, I think, for $700. And Art Arcade is still in the wait phase. Um, they don't know if they're going to be able to have their event or not, but they were asking for $1,400. No, wait, $10,000. And then last of all was the Trinidad Community Farmers Market, and they were asking for... Uh, $1,500, and I just uh, communicated with Joyce at Farmer's Market. She's received all of her information from the health department on 
what she needs to do to move forward with that event, but um, it, it looks like it's going forward as well. Um, and I just wanted to know if we were gonna discuss those grants further, if you were going to consider any of them. When we redid the budget, you allowed, you allotted uh, $10,000 in the festival funding or event funding line item. Um, and so if you wanted to have any further discussion on that, Hey, Marty, uh, what was the amount on the farmer's market? Farmer's market was um, 1500 Okay. And and Arlo is not till uh, September, is that right? October? Right. September. September? Is there a date on that, Marty? Um, September 11th and September 12th. Okay. Okay, I'll open up for discussion. Uh, Side, do you have anything? Well, it just breaks my heart. I think all those things are really important um, to Trinidad. Uh, I don't know how we can break it up and make a decision on, you know, how we can spread ten thousand dollars over them, but. I think the hotels have, have stabilized right now with a probably average occupancy of around 70-80%. So we will have some money coming in, um, but the rates are lower. But I, I don't know what we can do. I, I'd surely like to help in any way we can. I don't know how we can be fair. It's more than $10,000, all those things. And so I, I look to the rest of you, which everybody thinks. Camilla, do you have anything to say? I think we should wait a little while longer. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to say well, I think we need to table this for just a little while longer on all of them. Amanda? I think with Artocade uh, still being in that waiting time, that that is one that we can wait a little bit longer on. However, I think that once we see some of these organizations and people of the community moving forward, we owe some sort of diligence to our community in helping them move forward and helping them get back on their feet. Um, and I think that we can manage, and this is obviously the member perspective, um, I'm not extremely familiar with the budget or what really is going to happen in the next year, uh, but I think that we can afford to use that, that small amount, that ten thousand dollars of the budget, and try and and try and split it up between some of these programs or uh, events that are go, that are going to move forward. Um, I think it's I think it's inevitable in the rest in in our restaurant. We are still seeing uh, plenty of locals come out, but we're seeing tourists from Texas and Oklahoma and Louisiana. We had last week, so we've got people from all over that are still coming here. Um, and I think we need to, I think if we stay stagnant too long and, and keep pushing things off, that we will lose some sort of momentum. And I think we will lose some sort of uh, trust in the community as well. And although it's tight and money is, is, is not assured right now to be coming back to us as much as it was this last year, we do this, we are, we are a part of this board to support our community and support our city and support people coming in and seeing the wealth, the value of what we've got going on. Um, and I think, you know, maybe we can push our agenda towards more outdoor activities, things that are going to be uh, safe, and, safe and encouraged rather than some of the indoor things. But, but we have to realize that all of these people who are putting these things together have to follow rules too, and we have to give them some we just i think we need to start making some movement towards giving back to the community thank you thank you amanda i, I agree with you on some of them uh, uh marty when's that branson uh uh high low it is um is it now in june I'm looking at the application. Give me just a moment. I think it says September. 
Uh, yeah, it's in September. Oh, it, it's in September. Is what I what I want to get at is there any in now uh, June or July? Or June's over uh, with July and July and August. Allison at the AR Mitchell is waiting for um, permission to open any day now. So um, with the new orders that came down from the governor, she she might be probably the first one to move forward or be allowed to move forward. She's just waiting for the word on that. And, and her do you know uh, what's the art show when was that? The art show was set to open July 27th. No, wait a minute. That and that's what she's... No, 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 no. I take that back. That's the fair. So the Mitchell was scheduled to open... Hold on, I've got all these applications in front of me. The Mitchell was scheduled okay. to open uh, April 13th. And, and they're asking for the $5,000 for the show that they're doing? 6,000 for the show that she has hung and ready to open. And and when is that show? Whenever she can open her doors. She's ready to, she's ready to go. Oh, okay, it was so. to open in April, but she's been on hold. Okay. And is she well, waiting from the health department to get, to get her checklist finalized or is she waiting for the state? She was waiting for the state. Okay, because I think today wasn't today the day that bars are supposed to open and and yes. some of the other like in a phase three kind of uh, does our museums included in that? Does anyone know? You know, I think there might have been something in there about museums. I'd have to check. Uh, you can call Mike Valentine uh, and check with him. Yeah, and I, I am actually, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure the museums are allowed to open back up. I, I think venues in general are, um, because I know Art Arcade has reopened. Um, I know A.R. Mitchell I, is able to now, and also I know the movie theater is reopening uh, Friday night. So. Uh, Tom, the other item in there that I saw that was very low amount was the farmer's market, and I'm sure that they want to do yes. it. They're allowed to do something early. I've, yeah, I wanted to know the date uh, on that one, if the, when they were going to start that, Marty. Um, as I said, I would have been in communication with Joyce Kucha, who, who is in the head of the farmer's market, and um, she said that she was going to put something on Facebook. I haven't looked today, but there should be something up there, um, and she's, she's following all her guidelines. I got all the guidelines from the health department and sent them to her. She already had them, so she'd already reviewed them. Um, so I think it's that's going to be any day now, probably this weekend. Okay. I'm hoping this weekend. And her request was for fifteen hundred. Okay. Um, the way it looks here, there's like twenty, about twenty-two thousand dollars total in these grants, and we set aside ten thousand for them. So. Are the question I want to ask is: Is will this be it for the year? The, are these these events right here? Is, is this what we're going to do for the year? Um, there, technically, you have another grant cycle opening. In um, you should have had one opening in June the first, but we held off on that. So the next cycle mm -hmm. will open uh, September the first. So I can't okay. say whether or not this is all there is. There may be more grant applicants if we reopen that grant cycle. Mm -hmm. So basically, we would take 5,000 and divide it amongst this group and 5,000 amongst the next group that would be on the next grant cycle. Is, is, that, is that the way uh, everybody would see it? That's a possibility, Tom. I'm just I'm, I could look through last year's applicants to see who applied in the last cycle, um, and we could compare, you know, which new ones we might be getting uh, before you okay. make that final decision. Marty, I have a question: Is our budget is our is our budget ten thousand dollars for this cycle and ten thousand dollars for next cycle for twenty thousand dollars, or is our budget just ten thousand for the rest of the year? 
was the work it was ten thousand for the rest of the year. The ten was ten thousand for the remainder of the year, based on projections of lodging taxes. So those projections might surprise us, and we might have more than to work with than we thought. So if you wanted to um, use the ten thousand for this cycle, and then uh, in hopes that we get more lodging taxes than we've projected, then anything above what we've projected could be used for the next cycle. That's just a suggestion. Hey, Tom, I think Tom, Tom this bill, I was going to mention, you know, I think that uh, a suggestion from my end is I think uh, you guys need to consider about just capitalizing early on uh, with the $10,000 because uh, every, you know, we're uh, trying to establish a reopening uh, as long as it's safe, and I think capitalizing on the, the early, you know, the early now in the summer, and then just wait and see what happens in the fall. I think that would be uh, something for great consideration. Okay, I also thank think you. summer is the right. Summer is the time that is we encourage people to be outside. It's easy to host outdoor events. It just feels like the safer time that people are going to be traveling, um, and we should promote that. Bank on that. Yeah. Okay, Camilla. Ms. Campbell. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I still think we should wait and see. Okay. Okay. About especially about our motels. Well, since we have set this ten thousand dollars aside for these grants now, and they're ready to move forward upon being able to by the state and the, and Los Animas County. Um, I, I go along with Amanda that I think we do need to move forward to to kind of help them. I think that um, we set this ten thousand dollars aside, which normally would be fifty. You know, so I think I think we do need to come in and 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 help them. Um, so, um, any, anybody else have anything to say on that? Yeah, I think in lieu of everything, I think that we and the group has done as much as we can to try and save so that we're foreseeing uh, our budget for next year. But I, I do think that the hotels have gotten, our, you know, that's our income guys, the hotels have gotten some, uh, have gotten a little busier now. And uh, I do think we should help these groups in all fashion. Uh, I don't know if that's, you know, if, if it's $22,000 worth of grants. Uh, is that with Art OK, Tom? Yes, that is with Art OK. And, and, uh, and, and I think, uh, I think with the 10,000, I think we could help all of them. We, we can help give them all a, a little nudge, you know, yeah. uh, to, to move forward uh, and I think there's uh, there's five five events here and I and I do think it, it would be a good thing for us so hey, Tom, uh, Tom there's something of importance go, go that I think that uh, maybe you guys need to consider you need to talk to Mike Valentine uh, you know I, I don't know that uh, you know the with this uh, cares act money that is available the state got 200 and I think 75 million dollars the county of Los Angeles County is supposed to get over a million, $1.5 million. Uh, Trinidad share is about $510,000, but uh, expenditures, uh, it has to be COVID related. I don't know what would qualify because there are some pretty strict guidelines. So you might want to talk to me, you know, Wally might have some insight on that as well, uh, but Mike, uh, Cheryl, uh, but I think it'd be good to talk to them to see if there is any, if there are any COVID-related uh, items that you have incurred, uh, or maybe that uh, some of the uh, other entities that you tried to fund, if they they've incurred, that has shut them down uh, to try to replenish some of their the revenue that was lost because of COVID-19 has to be COVID-19 related expenses. So my recommendation is for you to talk to the, uh, Mike and Cheryl, and like I said, Wally might have some insight on that as well, because uh, there's a certain okay. time 
we, we just, uh, we're entering into an MOU with the county to move forward with this, uh, but we need to, as a community, be able to come up with um, some of these items to be able to ask for that money, otherwise it goes back. Mayor, one, of, one of the items I think, one of the items I think would be the Welcome Center, I think, uh, we've incurred some stuff from that so i think that would be one of them don't what you think i i've been uh, yeah. i've been mike mike would uh you know be able to guide you pretty well on that he's been staying on top of that go ahead i've submitted all of my expense sheets to um audra for covid related expenses okay good and Thank mayor you, would it both mayor would it qualify for and that's an excellent thought is would it qualify for if we did add that said um, an update on uh, our COVID restrictions in our town and look at, we have, you know, the river walk and we have golf and we have, but uh, on that page, the updates of something about COVID related, but marketed all of our outdoor amenities of Trinidad, would that qualify under that grant? I, I don't know. Uh, these would have to be things that have to be probably carefully looked at. Um, who knows? Cause they're, uh, there is a little leeway, but at the same time, they're very big. They have their stride. The guidelines are pretty strict. Uh-huh. I was just thinking, like, in the reason why I was thinking that, because you really um, enlightened me into things like um, the Mitchell Museum, which um, allows people in now, and they're doing COVID safe. Only so many, I, I'm imagining, I don't know, I haven't talked to anybody from the Mitchell, how many people are on the floor or whatever and it would give them more dollars. I was just trying to expand where we could attain some of that money to help our downtown area too at the same time by giving sort of COVID notice uh, ads, you know. Well, one of the things just, uh, you know, that we're one of the things I know for sure that would qualify is like any kind of uh, uh, expenses such as cleaning items, you know, masks, uh, anything like that that they've had to do to prepare to uh, allow people to come in that they're going to have to, you know, have some additional expense. I believe all that type of stuff would qualify. So like if we even supply, this is just free well thinking here, this work and work session. So if we somehow got, uh, you know, bought a thousand masks um, that had Trinidad's name on them for our downtown business owners, that would qualify? I would think so. Uh, that would be something to run by, like I said, uh, Mike and, and Cheryl. But I believe that would; uh, those are all COVID-related expenses. Yeah. Sanitary. We'll get with the. Uh, yeah. I I think it would be a good idea to get with Mike and and to find them that information out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Tom, uh, what I'll do then in in regards to the grants. Um, is I will list um, all of those that are pending and you can okay. vote on it at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, if you could give the amounts, the dates, um, but we have all that at Marty, but uh, that way we can uh, determine. Right. Um, I'll, just, I'll just summarize could, it. Could we? Could response. we somehow like maybe make a breakdown of percentage or somehow, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, what would I we, see what you're saying. we Tom. like to fund, do you see what I'm not, what I like to see is like the biggest return for us is heads and beds, you know, so in a sense we're looking for people coming in you know and 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 like the farmers market is such a small amount and such a huge impact for our community i think you know I, that's a good and even the branson high low such an such a small amount it's 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 not gonna affect any other one if if it's shortened but uh just just some maybe some help on some percentages uh, as to how to go with the, with the big amount of ones. All right, I can do that. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any discussion on those grants or is that we move forward with it? Oh, 
okay the KCRT 2021 ad contract? At your direction, Tom, I contacted Rick Neurotter at KCRT um, and requested um, a reduction in cost, a reduction in the of the total cost of the ad contract for 2020 and 2021. It's a fiscal contract, so it begins in July and ends in uh, end of June next year. Um, and so they, at your request, have reduced the ad contract cost to $4,000 and uh, maintain the same number of ads as they usually give us. Thank you, Marty. I think that's a, KCRT has been a huge asset to the tourism board because we've been able to give uh, a lot of advertising for a lot of businesses and events that we've had. So I think uh, I would like to just move that on to uh, for a vote if that's okay with everybody else. I'll, I'll uh, have it on the next meeting. I kind of lost you, Marty. If the if the board so uh, desires, I will put that on the next agenda on the regular meeting. Okay. I agree. Any, is there any? Now, is that a, that's a monthly invoice, correct? Right? It, yes. it is a monthly invoice, however, it is a contract that we have to abide by. And so it's the, it's the contract that we are approving for the total amount rather than a monthly invoice, even though you do approve the invoice monthly. Okay. And does this take us over anywhere in our advertising that we're already open? Have it we does. moved budget items to that, or because if that's going what? to push us over again, I think we need to consider that. And if, we, if we're able to move a line item from somewhere into this advertising oh, yeah. package, we can do that. But uh, I, 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 signing a contract when you're already over just doesn't sit well with me. There was there was money and other um, line items that we could have moved over, but we didn't at this time. But by the end of this fiscal year, from what I understand, we'll be able to. Is that right, Marty? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Is that okay with you, Amanda? Uh, did you have like a specific place that it pulls from? Just so I can kind of understand that a little more. So I'm, I'm looking at the projected revenue and expenditure sheet that I provided to you earlier when we devised a working budget and what you have for uh, advertising and publications was um, I believe it was $37,250. Um, that was allowed. We had budgeted 13,000 and we are already at 37,000. So, um, there are, we did move some money around and, and actually we had some line items that we eliminated, like the training travel and mileage was $33,000, um, that we eliminated dues and subscriptions we eliminated. So there were some areas that we did eliminate costs in, um, but we didn't, we didn't allow for moving amounts from other line items to cover the overage in advertising and publications. And is that just because so Amanda, you don't want to revert the budget until you... Right. Okay. My, my biggest thing, I understand that we can move items in between the budget once we get closer to the end of that year, uh, I just, I guess I, you know, will look at the budget again and see where we have money still. I uh, just, the overage thing freaks me out and I really, you know, if we're already $20,000 over, which is pretty close to what, what we've gone over already, 
we really have to take a consideration of what we're spending on advertising and and pick and choose which ones are going to be the best or just you know figure in for the budget for next year which we do in september i think to make that line item much much larger than we have been making it so let me just so as, as long as i'm sure there's money coming somewhere that there's money somewhere in the budget that can cover the money cost of this advertising then i'll feel okay about it but at this moment i just don't i don't feel comfortable Okay, so let me relieve your, yes. your concern just a tad bit then, Amanda. The bottom line in the reworked budget, our working budget, was that we had revenues over expenditures of an amount of 73538 And that was after we made the cuts to the wages in trolley. We made cuts to um, um, the gasoline and the diesel in the trolley. There were lots of different cuts that we made. Um, the training, travel, and mileage, and the welcome center. So the overall budget, including the welcome center, or the trolley, tourism, and trolley, left us with a seventy-three thousand um, dollar amount of revenues over expenditures that we had uh, figured out in our in our budget. So if we do have to move some money around, there is we we do have that seventy-three thousand dollars in revenues over expenditures. So that might relieve your concerns just a little bit. Hey, Marty, yes. this is still, uh, Marty, this is still one of the things that I was thinking and that's, and that's, that I, I gathered from what I gathered from uh, Amanda was she would like to know if I may be correct, Amanda, of what line items would that uh, money come from? I think that's what that's what I gathered. Right. Right. And I, I'm, I'm going to cut in real quick just to say I'm sorry, y'all, but I got to leave and go to a 10 o'clock meeting. Um, but you all have a great day. Thank you, Wally. Thank you, Wally. So the, Thanks, cut, Wally. so the cuts that we made were in the trolley um, portion of the budget, and we cut um, the original budget was $19,000, and so we're paying like $63 in wages for the remainder of 2020. So that was one of the areas that we cut. The other one was... Um, the gasoline and diesel, we had budgeted $3,000, and we cut that out entirely because we're not going to be using the trolley. So those figures there, the, the 19000 and the 1456 give us about $20,000 uh, that we're not going to be utilizing in the budget. So that's that's our, those are our, those are um, items of, or I could, you could call it a cushion, where if we over expand one line item we can we can we have that cushion of those items that we will not be um I, those budgeted items that we won't be using and we'll have we have the luxury so of having them so this year but we won't necessarily have them next year so that i will remember that when we do the budget in september so okay. that we can start making advertisement a, a bigger expenditure um because I don't know if I'd call it luck, but we got lucky with the cushion this year and we're able to fill that in. And it, and it probably, like you think you said, it's happened before or almost every year we go over in advertising. Um, so so somebody remind me, I, I'll try and remember, but somebody remind me of that when we do the budget in September, please. Right. <laughs> just to let you know, just to let you know that there, there is always line items to take money out of to to take care of things for be overexpended and and those are in some of the line items and that's the hardest part about making a budget a year before you use it if you don't exactly know what you're going to be spending money on things could change coronavirus could hit the united right. states i mean there's just a million there's a million what ifs so yeah. okay that just helps me understand and, a little bit and it's, better i appreciate it and it's a it's a good thing to have a line item to pull out of and to pull out of the reserves because I didn't want to pull anything out of the reserves. I just wanted to uh, cut out of the budget to go with a smaller budget without doing that. But the good thing is, is we do have line items where we could take the money from. We also had the $20,000 for new ventures in Trinidad. And we had that $10,000 extra that we could put back into somewhere because we didn't spend it plus the four plus plus forty thousand of that of grants money that we cut out that we cut out 
like but that so, area when we discussed that we just we figured that that with the projections that we made uh, that taking that fifty thousand dollars out of there would be the area that that we could use for lodging uh, tax um, lodging taxes that we wouldn't receive right right so because because the first one around we're twenty thousand dollars down on the first one isn't is that right marty yes from the previous year okay you no, haven't received nothing the first for quarter the first quarter yes so the second quarter is what we're waiting for now um this, and, and we should have that i sh should probably be able to get that from cheryl any day now okay thank you so then at the board's request then i will put kcrt back on the agenda for a vote um, at the next meeting okay thank you okay, that sounds good. thank you hey tom uh, this is phil one thing i want to remind uh your group is uh that discussion on the next budget uh will be starting i believe in august so that would be some consideration to maybe uh, begin to you know start thinking toward the end of july uh, about your budget uh, for next year so that way you don't have to wait till september to start working on it so that uh, uh we're not you have that information early for uh cheryl thank you <laughs> Did we decide that Maybe it was the second or third quarter that was going to be severely impacted? Was yes. third or was it second? Second, second and third. Second and Mostly the second. Mostly the second. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next item up is uh, the Gold Co contract. In regards to uh, GOCO, um, and yes. just to let everybody know or remind everybody what GOCO is, it's a website that we have been contracting with for many, many years. Sai would be able to tell us how many years, but if this is an ongoing relationship that we've had with them. Um, and so they are the ones that we send our, they send us the reader leads. Uh, on a weekly basis and we fulfill them with our visitor guides. So the beginning of 2020 uh, for this year, both January and February actually increased for both months compared to 2019 at 31%. Uh, and in March of 2020, our leads experienced a 27% decrease. And in April, they started to pick up again with a 9% decrease. Uh, we expect we expected May to be close back to the 2019 numbers, but in total for this year, we have sent out 2,637 visitor guides as a result of our um, at contract with GoCo website. Uh, and they How many are Marty? Yes, ma'am. How many, I'm sorry, Marty. Uh, excuse me, I thought you were done. Trying to get in between the sentences. How many in the last week? Um, in the last week, we had 62 total, and that's about average uh, right now. So we're about where we're supposed to be. Um, we're a little bit short. I'd say probably about 20% short than we were for 2019. 62 names for one week is still a lot, though. Yeah, it is. They also offered to add a PDF uh, link of our visitor guide to their website at no charge. Uh, so that would help us reduce our costs in mailing and production. So uh, I'll be sending, great. yeah, I'm sending him the PDF to get on the website and that will be, they can actually download that PDF uh, and we'll still have a record of the contacts that were that are downloading the PDF. So we'll still have um, numbers as to who's interested in Trinidad. We just don't we won't incur the expense of the production of the guide or the postage to mail it. So that'll be a really good thing. 
Uh, yeah, Marty, yeah, uh, Marty, what's the amount of that contract? The contract is um, for 12 months, $1,125. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Amanda. Go ahead. Guys, returning. No, that's okay. Uh, regarding the PDF and the district guide, I know we've had the discussion that they are a little out of date um, as far as the website that's linked on there. Um, what would be the possibility of uh, a very quick, I don't want to say a redesign, I think, it, I think the visitor guide looks very very sharp, uh, but just maybe altering a few of those items that do need updating, such as the website, or we send it into a PDF. Uh, if anybody has access to like InDesign, I'm not sure who designed the visitor guide, but that might be something that would, that would just, that's just a side thought, but it would be important to, if we're going to put a, a finalized copy online, it should have the updated website and the updated information. Um, and and that shouldn't be too, it, it would be so much more affordable to just fix the PDF rather than fixing and reprinting and redistributing the hard copy uh, pamphlets. I don't know if you have anything on that party about who who designed it or, or who we could get in touch with to just do like a super quick fix or if we have access to InDesign, I think that would be a really easy thing to get in and just change a couple of a couple of things. Unfortunately, we can't redesign it. It was done in contract with Studio Six, um, and they have given us some numbers on what it would cost us to update just the pages that we wanted to update. The Tourism Board uh, had discussion a while back about maybe doing an insert uh, on maybe the restaurants and what was open and what was closed. A lot of those restaurants that were in there, like double D's and um, Frontier Cafe and some others that have actually just gone away um, needed to be removed. So we did discuss um, doing maybe just one page of, of updates on it since most of the guide itself is it could still be remain current. Um, but we wouldn't be able to do that on our own. We would have to go back to Studio 6 since they were the designers. Okay, uh, I think putting it online is an excellent option, especially with the circumstances that we have right now. If, if it's possible, would you be willing to ask them what it would look like just to change those few things um, before we give them a final PDF copy? I think it's a really smart idea to, to get it updated and to get the right information on the page. Um, yeah, and that means I'd that, like oh, go, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay, Amanda, I think that's an excellent idea is not to have the production of that booklet again, but maybe in trying times, they've surely also been for Studio 6 with um, cities not having money, is what would it take for them to correct a couple in a PDF form, never to be printed, and us to be able to purchase and update it that way and use it with Google Colorado. That's a great idea. Thanks, Amanda. I agree with you. Okay, so I'll make that contact with Studio 6 and keep you updated on it. That would be great. Okay. And then as far as the Go Cold contracts contract goes, I think that, that one thousand for the Go Cold is really affordable. And, and and if we have an opportunity to put our PDF on a platform that's statewide or you know, that's for the whole effort in Colorado getting outside. Okay. Then that that is something I'd be willing to say yes to. So if you want to put that on the next uh, on the next meeting. agenda? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Marty. You're welcome. The next thing is staff reports. Uh, Mayor Rico? Nothing. I just, uh, everything that uh, I wanted to say, I said early on, uh, and I think you're going to move forward. Okay. Wally, Wally moved on to another meeting, so we'll move on to you, Marty. So I'll start with the Welcome Center. So um, I did send you an email with an update on what's going on at the Welcome Center. We are now open. We had our first week. Um, last week we were open Tuesday through Saturday now, nine to five. 
Um, all the welcome centers in the state have now received permission to open as of July the 1st, so they're preparing for their opening. Um, and so we've kind of been the um, cursor, so, you know, letting the other welcome centers know how it's been going, what we've had in place. We fought, we're following all the health department guidelines, all of the state guidelines. Um, we've had some visitors that are just not happy about what we have in, about the protocols that we have in place. Uh, but, you know, by the end of it all, you know, a couple of them have walked away. They don't want to wear a mask in. Um, but I'd say 98% of everybody that comes in is happy that we have those protocols in place. Um, they have to have masks when they enter. They have to follow the six-foot guidelines, uh, six-foot distancing guidelines. Um, we ask them to use hand sanitizer as soon as they walk in the door. Uh, we do our regular cleaning, scheduled cleaning throughout the day. We have sneeze guards up at the counters um, and we've opened up the brochure area. So uh, when we first opened up, they were not allowed to get their, to access the brochures and, and get their own brochures. But um, the state has allowed us to do that now. So we opened up the brochure area. We're only allowed to have Four, either four people maximum in the welcome center, well, six, including the staff. Um, but now we, we're also allowing car loads in. So if they all travel in a vehicle together, they're all allowed to come in together. And that's usually no more than six. Um, and so as, as we reduce those numbers of the people that are inside, then we allow others to come inside. We have the tables up and the umbrellas up so they can sit at the tables outside while they're waiting to enter. Um, and all in all, it's been really good. Uh, it's a little challenging for Jeff and I to have to wear our masks so often, but you know we're, we're doing it. And the good news is we had 268 visitors in our first week of opening. And we just received the okay to bring our volunteers back if they're younger, if they're 65 or younger. So we have three volunteers that fit that criteria. So Jeff and I will have a little bit of help now. And that's the welcome center report. Any questions? No, no I thank you, Marty. Wanna, I, I did want to say that one of my employees, Jade, she was at the welcome center dinner her, her grandmother works at the at the uh, Welcome Center with you, and she had told me the other day that she really appreciated that Jeff called and checked on her. I'm sure she's over 65, but she yeah. just wishes there was something more that she could do for you guys because she really appreciated being there at the Welcome Center. So with that thought, is there anything, any of these seniors that aren't returning to the Welcome Center, that's something they can still do for the Welcome Center? It was very touching, Marty, to have her, to actually have her, her granddaughter tell me how much working at the Welcome Center meant to her. Like, it's her world. So I got to thinking, is there anything else that these seniors can do for the city? Not really, not at this time. Um, I'll think about it, though, Cy, and see if there's something we can do. But Jeff and I do make phone calls to every volunteer every week to see if there's see how they're doing the highlight of the week talking to jeff yeah we call every week see if they and and to check and see if they need anything uh, you know we don't want them out and about any more than than anybody else so you know i took great credit to trouble for a doctor's appointment last week because she didn't have anybody to take her so i actually requested the day off just so i could help her get to the doctor so we're, we're staying in contact with them um we don't want to lose contact with them. That it, a lot of them feel the same way. The Welcome Center volunteer thing was was just what they did. So uh, we just want to make sure that they know that we're still thinking about them. We still send them birthday cards. We send sympathy cards. We we stay in contact every week. Um, so thank you, Marty, for all you do. Oh, Go ahead. my pleasure. I, I love that job. Uh, the other part of my staff report was visitor guides, so we've just kind of touched on that a little bit. We only have 17 boxes left, and the reason I'm telling you that is because there's about six months that go into production and, uh, and printing, design and printing of the visitor guides, so I want you to start taking a look 
at our visitor guides um, and seeing what we need to update in there, what you want to change, um, and start thinking about that. So we will not have a new visitor guide uh, printed for at least six months. Um, so if we're getting, want to get ready for 2021, now's the time for you to start thinking about those changes and start working on design so that we can get it to production within three months and then we'll have a new guide in hand for 2021 and hopefully we'll have the money then to actually pay for that guide. Um, the uh, 17 boxes, there's 120 20 per box. That's not very many considering that going out to the state welcome centers, they're all opening, so I'll be sending visitor guides to them. Um, there's seven welcome centers that I'll be sending them out to and we're sending them 50 apiece just to kind of, so I don't deplete the stock that we have. So that's 350. Uh, we're averaging 60 a week in mailings and about, oh, I don't know, 10 or 20 that we actually hand out at the welcome center. Uh, so I'm estimating a date of exhaustion in about two months. Uh, so we may not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to hold on to what we have before until we get something reprinted. But if you'll please keep in mind, we need to start looking at the visitor guide so we can do a reprint. Um, Marty, I, I, I wonder if um, by Amanda's suggestion about Studio 6 updating that into PDF form, is there any way then a QR code could be attached to that? Because I'm we're seeing in the hospitality industry um, QR codes for menu items and everything so that you just put your phone on it. And I've been more familiar with it recently because they're they're pushing it through the hospitality industry, you put your phone right by it, and all of a sudden the menu will pop up in a restaurant, or the amenities of a whole a hotel will pop, pop up. Is yeah. there any way for the future, because you know the way materials are, that if Studio 6 would could produce a new PDF that we could make a QR code with that, and not have to worry about uh, hard sending them out, instead you know, use that new format that I think we're all going to be seeing? Yeah, if it's in a PDF form, a QR code is, it's easy to produce. Yeah, that would be I great. used that twice yesterday. I used that twice yesterday and it was, it was, it was pretty amazing what comes up. Right. The I'm entire book will come up. Yeah, so we could think yeah. about, you know, that would save so much of the hard think, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Sai. So then I agree with that. Uh, I'm sorry, I just want yes. one more thing to pop in. Um, you know, yeah, accessing a QR code, I think is a, a really a futuristic, <laughs> but a reality, uh, a realistic way of looking to the future and what, we, what we're gonna have to deal with. Um, and we could, I mean, those, those are things that you could put, give out to every restaurant in town um, and have them post a sticker on their front door and as soon as they walk through you know questions about the about the city here here's this qr code here's this link here's something that you can log on to right from your smartphone from your table while you're waiting to eat um and and it would be so much easier to keep updated uh and and add additions to and make specials for um i think the online platform is is really where things are headed um and so but Marty, if you don't if you don't mind, Wall Studio Six, maybe get kind of an idea of you know what it would look like to print, what it would look like to redesign, not redesign, but to make those few uh, corrections on a, a few of those pages. Uh, what it would look like for a cost to kind of move toward a, a new technological approach with these things, um, and see what they what they have to offer up because I'm sure they're seeing a lot of places making these decisions uh, towards a new towards things online um so so maybe just that when you when you contact them ask them some of those questions and see what they have as far as prices and ideas and they might have more than we do so absolutely hey, maybe even a maybe a poster of the cover with that uh insignia on on it that we could have at each restaurant that's a good idea Yeah, years ago, Marty, we started with um, QR codes uh, uh, when they were first 
uh, came up and we actually had a screen that had um, codes that went to all the museums and different things downtown. And it was so long ago, it was when Hess Arts were, was involved with the tourism board. I don't know if that is, exists anywhere, but uh, you know, people just weren't user friendly with that now, but now everybody's gonna be taught it really quickly. We have QR codes from the state, from the tourism office. We have QR codes that we use for BLM, for Colorado Parks and Wildlife, uh, for awesome. bicycles, for trails, for just, we have a whole um, countertop full of QR codes that um, I, we direct our visitors to so that they can download materials. And they use it more and more, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Okay, so that's it on visitor guides. Uh, I wanted to update you on the Colorado Tourism Office. Um, the memorandum of agreement has been signed by both um, City Manager Mike Valentine and the CTO Director Kathy Ritter for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. Um, Colorado.com, um, the state web, the state, state tourism website. Um, is asking that all local businesses update their business status on their website. Um, I sent that to the Chamber of Commerce and to various businesses in town on how they can update their business status on the website. Um, so trying to get that done so everybody knows who's open and who's not and what their status is. Um, they also created a bingo game on Facebook so that uh, to help promote all of the restaurants in the state of Colorado uh, so visitors can uh, print or download these bingo cards uh, and as they visit the different restaurants they can fill out these bingo cards and then they're working in collaboration with well it's sponsored I guess by Pepsi uh, and so there's a huge amount of the prize uh, vault is huge uh, so you can get anything from a, a Pepsi cup to um, outdoor recreation stuff it's really really neat so if none of you have seen that yet you should take a look at that uh, and we were advised by the director that we are now in the ready phase so the phases for the Colorado Tourism Office were wait ready set and go and we have just now entered the ready phase um, and so that means um, to, to us, that means that the state is now promoting to all in-state residents rather than out-of-state residents. So that's their primary focus, uh, is advertising to in-state uh, uh, travelers and giving them the information about where they can go in-state to do whatever it is their interest might be, whether it's, um, and it, their focus is also on outdoor recreation. So fishing and hiking and cycling and you know anything that you can do outdoors and that's their primary focus um so that's the update from the Colorado tourism office any anything on that no so i'll go on to highway of legends okay so i'm on the board of the highway of legends we had a meeting last night uh we've invited several trinidad and los Angeles county community members to become members of that board. Um, Amanda and Tom, I'm sorry you couldn't make that meeting. It was it was actually quite interesting. We now have Felix Lopez, County Commissioner Felix Lopez that has joined our board. Uh, and Walt Bolden from South Central Council of Governments has also joined the board. So we have two good representatives in addition to you, uh, Tom and Amanda, that are on the Highway of Legends board. And there's lots of exciting things going on with the Highway of Legends. Uh, we're still waiting on our designation, on the announcement of whether or not the Scenic Highway of Legends will be designated a national scenic byway. Um, that should be coming in the next month. Uh, and that's going to be huge for us to be a national designation rather than just a state designation. I'm also working with Judy Walden. Uh, Judy is, um, um, has been with tourism and worked with CDOT and many entities in the state for many, many years. Uh, she worked with Miles with the Colorado Tourism Office as well. And in conjunction with her and Lenora Bates, who is with the uh, Colorado Scenic Byways, 
We're collaborating on destination itineraries for the Highway of Legends um, in conjunction with the Los Caminos Antiguos in the um, Alamosa area, the San Luis Valley area, and Silverthread, which is Creed in that area. So we're developing itineraries on the CTO website, and they should be up next week um, on what they can do as far as, uh, well, we're even titled it Short Walks, Long Views. And in my uh, itinerary that I've put together for them, we're listing um, three um, areas where you can hike on the Scenic Highway of Legends, and those are Trinidad Lake State Park, um, the Longs Canyon uh, Trail that has the KT boundary on it, and then Monument Lake. So those are the three itineraries that I'm currently putting together, and I'll send you those itineraries as soon as I get them completed. Uh, the Southern Mountain Loop. I don't know if any of you know what the Southern Mountain Loop is. It's the Highway of Legends. And there's been a planning environmental, environmental linkage study that I think, I don't know, Mayor, if you've participated in any of those meetings or not with the Pell Group. Uh, but they are, they've been having meetings uh, and studying what needs to be done on the Highway of Legends as far as um, adding bike trails and hiking trails and basically focusing on the safety of the outdoor person and what they are wanting to do on the Highway of Legends. So they have just released their implementation recommendations after all the studying and all the meetings that they've had and they've identified their phase one. So now that they have the study and they know what they need to do what's next so we do a lot of studies sometimes we don't get much action out of it but they're the first phase is that they want to work on the monument lake to north lake for an off highway link between the two lakes um they're identifying funding sources and the governance you know who would be in you know in, in control of these things um, and what needs to be done there. So that's the first phase of what they're going, what they've identified on the Highway of Legends. Hey Marty, uh, can I interject real quick? Like you said that that was the PEL group. Yes. Could you send me a little more information on? That? I've heard of them. I've just been so busy doing other things and not been able to talk to them. But is there any interaction between the PEL group and the Highway of Legends group? Yes, there is. So we we participate. The Highway of Legends group participates in all the. Uh, Mountain Loop Pell study meetings that they've had. So yes, we do. Uh, Wally has also very, been very active in that, as has uh, the county commissioners. Um, and I believe uh, a lot of the businesses on Highway of Legends, like the Stonewall, the owner of the Stonewall Lodge, um, and others, the Cokedale Mining Museum gentlemen. Uh, so a lot of businesses along the highway have participated in that as well. But I'll send you all the information I have. Um, just the other thing I want to mention to you, now that we have a new uh, uh, city councilman, uh, I may ask him to see if he would want to be part of those groups. Eli would be great addition. Thank you. There will be a public virtual open house and the study report will be released um, sometime in July or early August. So I will actually loop you into that as well. So you have that report. Okay, the next part of my staff report then is events. Uh, so I just wanted to up, update you that the Santa Fe Trail 200 year commemoration, uh, we haven't had a group meeting in a couple of months. I'm planning on one on July the 7th. Uh, and what we're planning right now is a 2021 fundraising event because we're gonna need some money to have this event. So we kind of were looking at maybe a Valentine's Day uh, dinner and dance at the A.R. Mitchell. Uh, we're thinking about maybe making it invitation only so it would be an exclusive event. Uh, maybe having as many as up to 200 guests and we're setting ticket price to include uh, catering, music, uh, silent auction, live auction, maybe live auction. Um, and along with that we made Tom, if there are any other grants that we're going to be coming up the remaining of the year, um, the uh, Santa Fe Trail Group will be asking, uh, will be submitting a grant 
to help with this event in February. So um, we will be doing that, but it wouldn't be payable until uh, 2021. So um, we were looking at that. Um, as you all know or may know, fireworks have been okay. Um, they're going to have fireworks in Central Park. There won't be, the park won't be open. Uh, and everybody's being asked to view the fireworks from their vehicles or from their homes. Uh, and that's the only way that we could get that event approved by the state and the health, the county health department. But it looks like that's going to go forward. Um, I did give you a short report on the farmer's market. They received their guidelines and they should be opening soon. So those are the only two events right now that I've had approved. Um, and, and that and others will be following soon as far as soon as some of the restrictions and guidelines are set forth by the state. Uh, the website and this the Visit Trinidad Colorado website. Um, we're working closely. Um, the blog that uh, Amanda did such a great job on, so we're going to be doing a little bit on um, uh, updates on that um, on Space to Create. We're, that'll be our next blog. We're working with Wally on that one, and we've also have continually putting COVID updates on the website as well. Um, Thanks, next, report, next report on RPM. So RPM is the vision, the bicycle vision uh, that we paid so much for to get done. Um, the draft has been sent to several individuals, um, and I sent you that last night for review. Um, so that from and that's Rob Simon um, and he has done a lot of hard work on that and I think we have a good document now that we can look out to see what we need to do to be ready for uh, Fisher's Peak to be open coming into the into the community to start doing their outdoor cycling etc um, and that draft um, if you'll review that and mark it up with whatever questions, additions, editing that you have on that. Um, Mayor, I'll send you a copy as well. Uh, Wally reviewed it, I reviewed it, and several in the community have reviewed it. Marty? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it, I, I thought it was such a huge, good document. And I was wondering if there was any way at some point, and I don't know what point that is, that we could have a breakout session and 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 take it bite by bite and actually come up with committees because some of that was so good. Um, but to, you know, I don't think any one person could really do that. But if we could somehow divvy up all the chores that were that were embedded in there and come up with uh, a game plan. Yes, and that was report that's, that's we paid for. Right? So like I say, you know, you do a study and then sometimes you fail to take action. Now is the time to take action on that report. So that's the next step. So if anybody has any editing to do on that on that report that I sent you last night, uh, please get me those changes or additions and I will get to Rob Simon. And then we should have a final document um, in hand by the end of this week if you get me those changes or edits as soon as possible. Then we'll have a final draft and then we'll get those committees together. Hey Marty, how, how big a document is that? How many pages? Um, you know, I have it right here. It's 58, I read it this morning. Thank you, Amanda. But I can deliver a hard copy to your, I'll, I'll just put it in your box, Mayor. Okay. And the reason why I ask is a lot of times, you know, they do all these studies and, and they, they are so repetitious in their information and uh, kind of I've seen documents like that and if that's what bugs me and you would think that there would be a, a simpler way for these people. I think they just get paid by the page. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, they've been paid and if it's by the page, they yeah. got a lot per page, let me tell you what. Well. But it's actually a very comprehensive document. It's not repetitive in the least. And there's a okay. lot of good information on what we need to do to get ready as a community. Yeah, and that was one of the questions that I asked about Rob Quinn from Rob Quinn earlier. And uh, what do we need to do as far as community readiness? Maybe it's in this report. It is in this report, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if I may, Matt, just, uh, 
what I like about the report is how they try to get the schools involved in bicycling, and I think that should be a huge aspect for us here in Trinidad, uh, trying to yep. get schools in, involved in that somehow. Yeah, I agree with you, Camilla. I thought that that was an excellent point, and that there should be somebody from the school system to kind of, and then maybe have one big group with all the different schools, one representative. <laughs> There are organizations here in Trinidad, a lot of bike enthusiastic, and I know this is going to be a volunteer project, but if we could get one, I know a couple of people offhand right in my head that we could go to the school and present it to the school, maybe to try to get some kids. I think that's something we could look at down the road, all right, not immediately, but de definitely down the road. Mm -hmm. If I may, I just had a couple of questions, uh, as this is a very new document to me and a new initiative. Uh, so when did when was this requested by the board? Was it uh, something that was brought to us like last year or years before, and we decided to fund the survey? Just, a, just how did it get started, I guess, was my question. So Amanda, what, what happened with this was we had an economic development director prior to Wally. Her name was Tara Marshall. And she and several others in the in the area participated in what was called a craft initiative. And the craft initiative identified action that could be taken by a community to move their communities, their destination forward. What was identified for Trinidad was cycling tourism. That could be our next huge um, impetus in the in the community for for increasing tourism and uh, increasing visits to our destination. As a result of that craft program, um, the state um, announced that grants would be available, made available, so that each of the communities that had um, identified what their potential was could move forward with finding out what needed to be done to achieve that goal of making their destination what they saw it could be. So the state uh, opened up these grants and the tourism board and the city applied for this grant. We received the grant and as a result we had to engage um, a, a company that would produce this report for us and this is the result and that's kind of it in a nutshell but it was a very expensive report uh, in addition to the grant the tourism board and the city had to pony up with some additional funds uh, to pay for this and um, that's why I told the mayor if it's if they got paid by the page it's probably about a thousand dollars a page Well, thank you for that explanation. That makes sense to me. Uh, going over the document and also being a young bicycle enthusiast, uh, I think all of this makes perfect sense. I think it's a really good opportunity for us to embark on outdoor recreation. Um, my, my question, maybe Mary, you can answer this. There was something in the document about an outdoor recreation manager, um, and that was something that was uh, to be taken on by the city, but somebody who was fully equipped with the um, with the resources and with the knowledge of what sort of outdoor recreation activities that we do offer, um, but had a place in the city that was able to be kind of a leader and a spokesperson for uh, anybody who's, who's got things they want to improve on. I was just curious if there is anybody in the city at this moment that has that position or Hold on one sec, everybody. You're good. <laughs> Let me call you back. I'm in the meeting right now, but I'll call you back in a little Okay. Uh, just to let you know, you know, that was brought to our attention, and uh, we've had some discussion on it, but because of this COVID-19 and the reduction in what we've had to do with our budget shortfalls, uh, I'm not sure where it's going to go at this point in time, uh, but that is something that I think that we realize that maybe uh, we may have to consider but how to fund that position is going to be the question. And that and that makes perfect sense. Um, and, and not only just with the cycling, but with Fisher's Peak coming up, I think 
an outdoor recreation manager is is something that we really should consider um, being an essential part of the city right now who can help guide us into this big upcoming project that we may not know how to handle quite yet. Um, so that was one of my questions. I agree, my I agree with you, Amanda. Yeah. My other question was about uh, just regarding Rob Quinn and the purpose of his uh, visit today. Uh, just so I'm clear, he's interested in being our marketer, our marketing agency for this cycling project, kind of the head the head honcho for the action items. There were like a series of action items which included the school um, and the you know the school involvement and then also platforms for educating the community about how to how to drive on the road at the same time as cyclists um, and so my question is just is that is that what, what we want Rob Quinn for is it is what is what is his intended job what is his intended purpose uh, overall toward this initiative and with with that same question, Amanda, and did he was he did he acknowledge that we were getting the summer PM study last night? Does he have connection with them? Because it was kind of unusual that we got the study and we got somebody talking to us about that position um, today. That was, was there any is there any connection or just just happened that way? It was purely coincidental. So Rob Quinn has been requesting. Uh, to do a presentation for the board for the probably the last six months, but yes, he has been in connection. I mean, in in, um, in conversation with Rob Simon. Uh, in fact, Rob tapped into his knowledge of a lot of things, um, bicycle related on high schools and things like that, and what what's been being done in other communities. Uh, Rob Quinn actually participated in one of the one on one that you mentioned earlier, Cy. Uh, when we had those in Trinidad, and Rob Simon came in and did the one-on-one -on -one with all the different individuals. Rob Quinn was one of those individuals that he worked with um, as a participant, but not as a marketing person. So and I remember to... when I was confused. You know, right. So he was there. Yeah. Now he did interview him as a cyclist because Rob does come down and do cycling in Trinidad, uh, and he's participated in, like he said, the ride the Rockies here in Trinidad and. Uh, right across America and other so he he interviewed him as a participant not as a marketing person but it just so happens that Rob does marketing for cycling um, and so it just kind of came together well no, I think it seems like he does it very well I think he has a he has the passion for it and also the knowledge and experience um, but I'm not sure uh, you know, we, it would obviously come down to cost and come down to how much of this we need help with. And I, and as far as marketing goes, and especially with everything that's coming up, I'm, I'm sure we're going to need help with it. So I don't know how soon we would make a decision on that, or if it was just kind of a introductory time. Uh, but like said, Marty, it's like. Yeah, we did the survey, but now it's time to take action. You know, if we really, the last six months, I don't know about you guys, but it's flown by for me. I, I imagine New Year's Day is a blink of an eye ago, and so we can only intend that the next six months are going to be the same thing, and that we're already in 2021 and anticipating the opening of Christmas week, and we just, I really want us to be ready for that. Um, and and cap, yeah, market, market on the things that, that could really draw a lot of people here and, and make us the tourist destination that we've been wanting to become, you know, that we're already in cheap forms, but help us pass the finish line, I guess. One of the things about the RPM study, we have it, we have this Rob for uh, doing a, an advertising package or working for us, but we also need the event, the events to happen. So at least we have all of these things in place you know or start to working on them for them to be in place thank you marty for putting that all together you're welcome okay so the last one more question i'm so sorry but i just asked one more question uh, is the tourism board solely responsible for what happens with this or is the city involved as well there's actually many entities involved um, the city, the county, 
uh, Christine Loudon, who holds her uh, gravel grinder every year. Um, so you know, other people that are that are producing events that are working with this, the Stonewall uh, group that does the Stonewall ride every year. Uh, there's so it's it's kind of a a gathering of everybody that's involved in 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 the the um, recreation, the cycling. Um, so it's not. I think everybody's a everybody could be a team player. Um, I don't know where the funding would come from. Uh, we would have to identify, you know, funding sources, et cetera, for whatever it is we are, we want to, what we want to do with it. Um, so I, I think it would depend upon the event that was created as a result, uh, and see what you know, maybe the outdoor recreation person or manager that would be identified down the road would be in charge of all of that. Uh, I'm sure that it would take a committee, uh, you know, and it might be a committee of all these people that are involved. So uh, it's kind of a wait and see, uh, but I think we need to make sure that we have our ducks in a row so that we know exactly where we're going. Hey, Marty, I'm not sure if you've read this, but uh, in the last week it came out that I guess uh, Senator Gardner and I'm not sure Bennett and some others had uh, moved some information, moved some uh, to pass. Or I think they did pass some legislation at the federal level uh, about I'm not sure if it's recreation included on outdoor activities, and I don't know if there's funding available for something like this. That could be something to kind of check into. Okay. Um... I wouldn't know where to start looking for that information, Mayor. Do you do you have a lead I could take on that? You know, I think the best thing to do. I don't have a lead, but I it, there was an article that came out in the newspaper here in the last week, I believe. So you might just start there. And it was outdoor recreation. It was. Uh, it, it was. Like all these uh, legislators now that it's a uh, political year, are coming out with all this information. Uh, so it does. It does talk about it in, in the caption of the uh, of the article. I'll I'll do some research. Thank you. Okay. Check with the newspaper. Okay. All right. So the last thing. All my me... questions. Go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you for letting me ask ask all those questions and answering. Them. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. So the last item in my staff report then is um, I received a phone call from Jackie at. Um, KCRT yesterday and he wanted to know if somebody could do um, an interview um, on what's open in Trinidad and in the area so that they could do an announcement uh, over the radio and, and that's going to take a little bit of research. I did call all the restaurants yesterday and, and last week to find out who was open and if they were having indoor dining and updating that list that the Chamber of Commerce was doing, um, they're no longer doing that, but so I, I kind of took on that project, but um, he wants to go beyond restaurants. He wants to know what retail businesses are open and museums and, you know, events that are going forward and stuff, and I'm, I'm not quite sure I have the time to do that. I uh, was wondering if there was anybody out there that could, that wanted to do this interview and and maybe help out with a little research so that they, that can be done, or if we even wanted to do that. Don't everybody step up at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe what we could do is split it up a little bit. Um, I know we're all pretty pretty heavy busy right now, and with, every, with all the regulations, I mean, I'm here open to close every day. So maybe what we could do is like each person could take on uh, a, an industry. Maybe Camilla could take on like retail shops, and I think I think you have more of like a knowledge of who who is in town. Um, maybe one of us could do like hair salons. One of us could do uh, museums, and and split it up a little bit more so that it's a little easier and not such a daunting task. I'd be willing to take on oh. hair salons. Uh, if you wanted me to do like the, just kind of a beauty, beauty thing and and maybe Camilla could do the retail and maybe Tom could step in on the museums and decide <laughs> what else, what else? 
Well, a lot I, of other things. You know, I could take up, uh, take on the, uh, the retail merchants downtown, and there is not that many museums, so I could take the museums if someone doesn't want to take the museums, because there's there's only a few. <laughs> And um, I'll take the I'll take I, I'll take the museums in the event. Okay, I, I could do some. I could do what I do every day is uh, I could do um, the uh, outside recreation and the things that guests to our community can still do outside. And maybe if we wanted to do it that way, it, thanks, Amanda, for that. Maybe we could figure a time that's good and us all do the radio so everybody has their own little thing that they're doing and make it even wower than just one person running all the way through it you know what I mean okay we have till Tuesday uh, okay. so Monday evening is our drop dead deadline <laughs> so you talk so about what five days have, what about uh, if we all did our research and had it in by like Friday evening or Saturday Friday evening that gives us two full, two full business days to kind of work on calling people and and seeing what's going on and then Friday put the list send the list to you Marty maybe or send the list in an email and uh, do they want like a person in person interview or do they just want the kind of they they want to they yes either or he can he said he could do it or somebody from the board could uh, step up. It's a it's a phone call. It's a virtual interview. So um, my question if, is, uh, being that we have to have them so soon, Friday, Monday. If someone says we're not sure, we're going to probably open in two weeks. Exclude them. No, we would actually so say them, we're going to open in two weeks if that's what okay. they tell us. That's what I need to know. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I okay. have Tuesdays available uh, at, at the moment, so I would be willing to do the actual interview if we all just kind of want to do our part in the research and then put it together and do that. I think it, it, it's a good way to get our name out there. It's a good way for us to promote local businesses and show our support. Uh, and I'm in for that. That sounds good to me. Perfect. And then I'll, uh, I'll good. write up that report and get it on the website as well as what I want to do with that end of it. So restaurants are done. Um, and you guys get your all your stuff together and get it to me. I'll print something up, and then Amanda, you can do the interview, and I'll let Jackie know. And that's it. That's all I have, guys. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna right. run up because I'm going to run to work right now, you guys, and I will take care of the merchants downtown. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Okay. Um, well, well, we'll adjourn the meeting at 10:59. Uh, in the next meeting, Marty? Uh, next meeting will be in two weeks. So that'll be um, July the 8th. Okay, hey, Marty, thank you. No, uh, uh, just a reminder, uh, don't forget to give me that RPM thing. And also some just some basic information from the PEL and Highway of Legends group. Uh, so that I can bring that up at our next our next um, meeting, yes, which sir. is early in July. Okay. Okay, I will. Hey, thank you all. Hey, Phil, I was wondering if I could call you and uh, I just need to talk to you about something. In sure. A couple minutes, would that be okay? Sure. All right. Oh, thank thank you. you. We're done. Give me a quick call. All thank right. You thank you, Marty. Bye. Have a good day. This conference is no longer being recorded.